i do now i do for the sake of the people of the world but there is one man here on earth who will never kneel before you who is this imbecile where is he i wish i knew situation uh, where we would have a country that would say we're not going to have unemployment benefits. Do unemployment benefits discourage people from looking for work? Many Republicans are making that argument. It's $3.8 trillion dollars yeah. dirt budget, by the way. Okay, add it up. We need immediately for weights and extend the benefits when we figure out... The only to... way out of this nightmare of unemployment for these families is a job. Because failure to do so would have led to catastrophe. We acted because we had a larger responsibility than simply winning the next election. You can leave your work, focus on your talent, your skill, your passion, your aspirations. <laughs> Jack, you gotta tell us how you really feel about the I just did. I, a I, horrible woman. I, did you ever have a moment of doubt about capitalism? But this is such basic economics, you would think even Nancy Pelosi could grasp. But tell us, is the unemployment rate expected to rise any further? New data showing the unemployment rate hit the double digits in 15 states. A lot of people find themselves looking for work. Right now, there are 14.6 million people unemployed in this country. The question here is, what is best for our economy right now? The problem is the spending, and this is a spending bill. If you're a president, cut the minimum wage. It kind of sounds like if you don't have a job, you're you're on drugs. I mean, is this what you're trying to say? Increase the price of labor and fewer people are going to get hired. Counting on President Obama to turn things around. Back askward ways of trying to fix the economy. Well, just tell me, where in the world do you find these angels who are going to organize society for us? There's a scene in Superman 2 where the supervillain General Zod invades the White House, bringing with him destruction and chaos. It is at this very moment that he beckons the President of the United States of America to kneel before him. And this is precisely where we're at right now in our country. Our President is kneeling before General Zod. Our president is kneeling before a high unemployment rate. Our president is kneeling before the lobbyist in Washington. And our president is kneeling before the greatest recession our country has ever faced. Let me just tell you, this isn't the first time we've been in a recession. And every time since the 1950s, the unemployment insurance has been extended until the rates have dropped to a normal level. This time is a little bit different because we've had sustained unemployment rate that is nine and a half percent. The ability of uh, fiscal policy to affect output by affecting aggregate demand uh, makes it a potential tool for economic stabilization. And uh, in a recession, the government can run expansionary fiscal policy, thus helping to restore output back to its normal level and sending unemployed workers back to work. Um, there are automatic stabilizers such as unemployment insurance that act as a form of counter-cyclical fiscal policy. And uh, the interesting thing now is that unemployment insurance is actually 99 weeks long. Currently, the maximum number of weeks that can be claimed is 99, which is the most in U.S. history. This brings up a lot of concerns. A lot of the people in Congress think that maybe 
these people that have exhausted 99 weeks of benefits are lazy or drug addled or they're just milking it. But really, we have to go back and talk about taxation and spending. Uh, two noteworthy tax provisions were the Jobs and Growth Tax Relief Reconciliation Act of 2003 and the 2001 Economic Growth and Recovery Tax Act. Uh, their combined effort actually created 1.4 million jobs in the nine months after August 2003, and uh, it steadied the unemployment rate at 5.6% in May 2004, uh, well below its peak of 6.3% a year earlier. Um, and the Treasury Department actually estimated that uh, as many as 1.5 million Americans would have been out of work had these tax provisions not been enforced, and the unemployment rate would have been well over 7% at the time. The Dukudas believe that having a current federal minimum wage of seven twenty-five an hour will actually help to assist the poor out of poverty. Unfortunately, they're doing the exact opposite. Politicians are not economists. They do not understand how the minimum wage affects unemployment. It's basic economics. Supply and demand of labor dictate that having a price above market equilibrium will reduce the demand for jobs. Our unemployment rate is pretty high. It's 9.5% and it's been that way for like the last six months. And that doesn't include people who have exhausted their benefits, people who own their own businesses and their business has slowed or stopped, people who got fired, people who are un underemployed. But when it comes to spending, uh, Congress passed the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act of 2009, which had $288 billion in tax cuts, $224 billion in education, and $275 billion towards federal contracts, grants, and loans. But the question still remains, how does this affect unemployment? Um, a recent study by Ray Fair shows that the stimulus bill will actually lead to an increase in the real output over a 12-year period by $554 billion and an increase in the average level of, of employment by 509,000 jobs. Um, moreover, a study on unemployment fiscal multipliers by Tommaso Monticelli shows that an increase in government spending of one percentage point of GDP will generate 0.6 percentage points of employment. So just do the math. Each percentage point of GDP will produce an increase of employment of about 1.3 million jobs. As an alternative to increasing the unemployment insurance, the Small Business Jobs Act should alleviate some of the pressure for some of these unemployed people by cutting taxes on small businesses and also by increasing the amount of money that they get so that they can provide jobs. We have efficiency wages, which are higher wages that are paid in order to increase productivity and cut labor costs. These wages are also above market equilibrium, therefore reducing the amount of available jobs. These benefits are generally spent in their entirety. So as far as government st spending to stimulate the economy goes, it's pretty efficient. Without these benefits, a lot of these people who claim unemployment won't have the money to function, and it could create a snowball effect in their local economies, and more people could stand to lose their jobs. Labor unions also disrupt market equilibrium. Labor unions are in place to fight for better wages and incentives for their workers. Because companies continue to give in to their demands, other workers are not able to get jobs and workers who are not in the union can potentially become unemployed. A lot of people that claim these benefits have less incentive to go out and find a job because they feel like they're already being taken care of, similar to what we see in a lot of European countries. So now that we talked about fiscal policy, let's go back and talk about monetary policy. You know, the question we're trying to answer is, what is the government doing now to ensure a recovery? And um, actually, the Federal Reserve recently announced that they're buying $600 billion worth of treasuries to divert deflation and to reduce unemployment and this in turn will increase output. Now an increase in output not only affects productivity but an increase in productivity of let's say 3% will affect real wages by 3%. And why is this important? Well periods of high productivity such as the 40s, the 50s, the 60s have been coupled with lower unemployment rates and periods with low productivity such as 70s and 80s have been associated with higher unemployment rates. So all of this coupled together with the previously mentioned uh, 99 weeks of uh, unemployment benefits, 
creates the perfect scenario for the Laffer effect. And the Laffer effect states this, uh, a tax reduction will actually increase the level of government spending, but also increase its share in output. And how is this possible? It's only possible if there are sizable unemployment benefits, such as the ones we have right now, lump sum taxation is unavailable, and the budget is balanced through adjustments in government uh, spending. So to answer the question we posed previously, what's the right policy? I don't have all the answers. I'm just a college student. But what I do know is that something's got to give. And right now, we're just waiting for Superman. Good afternoon, Mr. President. Sorry I've been away so long. I won't let you down again.